Welcome to the Forever Cash Podcast. I'm your host, Michelle Bosch, um, co-creator of the Land Profit Generator. Excited to come to you today and talk to you about your 90-day plan or your 90-day sprint for Q3 of 2021. Have you planned it already? If not, let's plan it together. And I'm going to be sharing with you today some things to consider as you plan the next 90 days. That means July, August, and September to make it count, to leave it all out on the court and see new levels of progress, new levels of growth, new levels of freedom. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Forever Cash Life Real Estate Investing Podcast with your hosts, Jack and Michelle Bosch. Together, let's uncover the secrets to building true wealth through real estate and living a purpose-driven life. Coming to you today on actually the summer solstice. Today is June 21st. Today is the longest day of the year. In case um, you know you're completely checked out of that because your life is busy, I am here to remind you there's a beautiful natural rhythm out there happening with us going around the sun. And we are at the longest day of the year. And we can forget about those natural rhythms because our lives are busy, because our lives are are crazy. And, um, and that means that we are about to end the second quarter of 2021. And I hope that you have made the most out of this first half of the year. And I'm here to help us prepare, you know, and plan your next 90 day sprint for Q3 of 2021 to make it count so that you can grow in, in leadership, you can grow in finances, you can grow in personal relationships, in your ability to be an amazing parent, um, in an ability to be an amazing friend, and so on and so forth. And uh, here we go, and let's get started. So the very first thing that I do is usually the week prior, which this would be, the, you know, the week prior to the beginning of the new quarter, which starts next week, July 1st, would be for me to sit down and start, um, you know, blocking some time in my calendar, about a couple hour time block to to go and reflect on the last 90 days and look at the accomplishments, look at some of the goals that I had set, where did I come in as far as actuals, whether it be numbers, you know, revenue, profit, number of deals, uh, hiring, delegations, whatever it may have been, and, and see where I'm at. Where do I compare to what I had, you know, forecasted or what I had thrown out there as a goal. And that's the number one thing that I look at. And then I, I, I start looking at, okay, so either I came short on certain things or I over exceeded on certain things or I did not get to do certain things at all. And my very first thing is always, I always, in order to put more or to be able to fill up your cup with more, you first need to empty it, right? That is like, I think, a, a very timeless principle and saying out there that in order for your cup to be filled, it needs to be empty to begin with. So the very first thing that I like to do when I'm preparing for a 90-day sprint is like, okay, what do I need to stop doing? What needs to go into my stop doing list, which is usually things that I'm doing right now in the present that I can either potentially delegate because they're important, but they are not as important such that I should continue having them on my plate. They might not be in my, in my, you know, in my genius to continue having them. Maybe that's why they continue being on my plate. Maybe I haven't taken the time to train someone uh, perfectly or the, have the time and dedication to actually get them off my plate. So there's all the very first things that I look at are what are things that I'm going to be, you know, I'm, I'm going to stop doing that are busy movement right now, or that I could have and empower somebody on my team to take over from me so that those things actually get done. So they're usually things about the present. The very first thing that I look at. The second thing that I look at is, okay, what are some things that we did right now in the past that yield the results that, that we got, whether those are good or bad, but that created quite a bit of messes. And, um, and what kind of cleanup do I need to do in order for us to start right now, Q3 of 2021, you know, with a clean slate, with like a clean desk, with a, with a clean blank page, and we can move forward. And, um, and, and what you're going to find is that messes are usually about the past. 
So we looked at our present, you know, by using a stop doing list and delegation, you know, as a source of kind of opening up space for our schedule and for our 90 day plan right now for Q3. And then the second thing that I look at is what are things that happened in the past messes that either, you know, were the result of us blowing over a target in, in a goal and really exceeding it, but we made messes in the process because there's no way in on this earth that you're not going to accomplish something and that some mess is going to come out, something that was unexpected, un, you know, that you did not anticipate, where you basically fail forward, you made money, but you made some messes that need to now be tightened up. Yeah. So that's the second thing that you look at. And, and you go and use this week or the next few days before the Q3 starts and clean some of those up. And uh, a lot of the cleanup, you're going to see that it goes hand in hand with delegation with the first step. And then the third thing that I like looking at is, okay, what are, once I've looked at the things that I'm going to stop doing, the, the messes that need to be cleaned up and having a plan for how to clean those up. The next thing that I like looking at is the future. I'm always looking at the future because as leaders of our business, uh, whether it's you being the CEO of your land business, you know, or, or, or me, whatever it is, you know, if you are the leader of your business, it is your job to be a time traveler, to be always looking at what is coming, you know, in the future and anticipating the future and basically seeing what is out there and coming back to the present and helping your team implement and execute about on something that you saw in the future. That is our job as an entrepreneurial leader is to be a time traveler and to be a visionary and bring those vision back and explain to our team of the things that we saw, what are the things that are significant, that are important, and what is a strategy, a strategy to use in order for us to accomplish what we need to accomplish to get to that vision, to get to that goal, yeah? So that's number, really number three. And, and with that, more than often, about things about the future will always involve you gaining capability, you gaining skill sets that are going to help you master something that you want to accomplish in the future. The future is about things where we're going to have to go into uncharted territory, possibly, and take some risks and be uncomfortable and, you know, feel that discomfort and feel the fear that comes with that discomfort and take action anyways and muster the courage and move forward in faith anyway. Those things about the future are usually that. So some of the things that I look at are, are okay, you know, in that vision that I'm having about the next 90 days, what help? Who do I need help with? Because more than likely, anything that you want to learn, anything that you have a problem, an obstacle, a challenge, there is a who right now in this moment that has had that challenge before and that you can tap into. So for me, I, you know, I recognize that there's two things that we, we would like to basically improve upon and continue really sharpening our acts. It's like, or iron sharpening iron, you know, where can I find a great person that is going to help me with getting even better at qualifying leads and qualifying prospects, whether they be from organic lead gen or from paid traffic and uh, to, to bring them to a situation where I've qualified them and brought them into a sales conversation to send them, to sell them a piece of land, because let's be frank, you know, a lot of the reasons why a lot of people don't sell their land or are having trouble selling their land might be because they, or the team underneath them that they're trying to lead. Um, does not have the skill set, does not have the, the, you know, the, the business acumen on how to, or the training to be, you know, for that matter, on how to qualify somebody that says, is this piece of land still available? What are you going to say? Are you going to say just yes? Or how are you going to conduct that conversation on DM or on text such that you can continue asking open-ended questions to get that person to a point very, very quickly where they feel comfortable with you that you've created enough reciprocity so that they want to get on the phone with you and talk about the piece of land because then you have the opportunity to actually build relationship and build rapport with that potential buyer that is going to bring either a down payment or the full cash payment that you're looking to get on your land and is actually going to come to the closing table and 
you know, with an earnest deposit if necessary and not gonna, and not gonna, you know, bail out on the day of closing where your deal is gonna, you know, fall apart like a taco. So, so every single time when I'm doing, you know, my 90 day spring uh, planning for the following, you know, 90 days for the following quarter, I'm looking at what are some business skills. So for us, we identified that I needed a little bit more sales training in order, you know, to train my team on how to do that best. I also uh, went ahead and hired a coach. I want to improve my on-camera presence. I already had two sessions with her and boy, has it made a difference in my ability to actually, you know, deliver and, uh, and go straight to the point and not, you know, tell all kinds of stories, which for all of you that have been listening, you know, to me for, I don't know how many years now, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart, you know, I'm not a polished speaker. It's my very first time actually getting on camera training on how to communicate a message or a simple lesson or a simple story or a, you know, something that I know will be of value and it's going to help you, you know, in your land business or in any entrepreneurial journey or venture that you have going on. So, so that's for me, you know, I'm looking at what events I'm going to attend, you know, in July, Actually, in July, we're going to do quite a bit of play. We're going to be in Maui for the entire month of July, uh, but not entirely play. There's going to be a little bit of work. Uh, I also already looked out into, okay, what kind of events am I going to attend in August? What kind of events am I going to attend in, um, in September? And that where I'm going to have this continuous you know, uh, growth and education and a continuous um, journey of mastery to learn timeless business principles that no matter what's happening in the economy, no matter what platform is the one that is, you know, that is working, that I will continue to be able to flip land and sell land uh, without any hiccups. And to be frank, then turn around and pass that information over to you guys and share it with you guys. So that's that's the beauty of it, of, of, of you know, having or being in a community where, you know, I, you know, I take pride in being a, a student of a great life versus a king of a mediocre one. And where I am always on this ongoing quest for, for learning more, for becoming more, for um, really mastering new skill set. It excites me. You know, I am, I'm, I'm a person that has a big, uh, pioneering spirit, I think, because, uh, I know that the result of what my business is right now is a result of times in the past where I have been courageous, where I have made decisions that have required courage, but just because I made those decisions in the past and I have a business today, doesn't mean that I'm a that I'm a leader today. I'm only a leader today if I'm time traveling for my team, if I'm time traveling for my family, because it could be that your team is your family, that you have your daughters or your sons that are helping you in your land business or whatever it is you know, that, that you do, uh, if it's a family business, but you are basically that time traveler that is going out there into the future, learning and knows and recognizes that there's gonna be new skill set, new things that you're gonna have to learn, new risks, new bigger ideas, paradigm shifts, I mean, possibilities for you and your business and your family and, and that it's going to require that you constantly then muster that courage uh, to continue growing in your leadership, in your ability to provide for your family, in your ability to continue breaking barriers and pushing the boundaries of what's possible. Because for me, there's no bigger sense of freedom than that, that feeling, that inner feeling of, 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 of knowing that magic is possible at any moment. Uh, whether it be right now in the present or in the future, uh, because I am, because I'm actively seeking it, because I'm actively looking for it, because I know I can do it, because I know others have done it, you know, uh, before me, and uh, that's probably the only place in which I think uh, comparison is is a good thing. You know, it can be a bad thing when you're comparing yourself. You know, someone's, uh, you know, year ten to someone's year one. That is, that is not a good comparison uh, because it might actually demotivate you. But when you compare yourself to others that have gone before you and use them as a source of inspiration, that's when it's, you know, the only place where comparison is, is, is a good thing. And anyways, in any case, this is a little bit of a deviation from our main topic, but basically that's what I wanted to, you know, to, 
to talk to you guys about is that we need to continue exhibiting, having the courage to go out there in uncharted territory and take risks without any guarantee of success, uh, continuously innovate, things will continuously change. And that if you're looking for the latest tactic, that yes, those latest ta tactics are good to know, to understand, to be able to implement, to be able to execute. But underneath all of those tactics, the most important thing is, can you really create connection, human connection, you know, and the timeless business principle of a relationship with your seller, where you're being of service to your seller in a relationship where you're being of service to your buyer? And do you have the timeless business principle uh, skill of being able to negotiate and have the creativity to, you know, restructure deals as, as things change, as, you know, the terrain shifts, as, as things come up during a closing of a deal, yeah? And so if you are all about being in, in that state of always wanting mastery, of always looking and recognizing that the business that I have today is only there because of the risks and the courage and the skills that I have acquired up until that moment, but that I am not a leader just because I have that business today, but I'm a leader because I am going to continue to look out into the future and be a time traveler and, 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 and continue go into the future and assess, okay, what are the skills that I'm going to need right now between right now and that time in the future in order for me to continue reaping bigger levels of growth, you know, up-leveling mentally, physically, emotionally uh, as, a, as, a, as a person that can, you know, handle, bring on a team that is all in on you. Um, and, uh, and, and while still, you know, being an amazing parent, while still cultivating a relationship with your teenagers or your little children, or while still maintaining an amazing love relationship with your husband, especially if you guys work together, you know, I happen to be in a situation where we both to work together and it's definitely a challenge and it's, it's an ongoing thing of innovating of how can we continue to make this, you know, relationship even more rich uh, deeper, nurturing it as we go, as we work uh, together in our businesses, in our life dreams, in our life plans, um, and, um, and and continue growing, you know? So, so that's what I wanted to leave you guys with. And if you are ready to continue on your mastery, if you're already doing deals, if you would like to learn more about what this land flipping thing is, you know, you are very welcome to go ahead and check us out at landcoaching.com, landcoaching.com, and just book a call with one of our team members. They're here to really understand what your goals are, where you're at in your land flipping business. Are you having problems on the acquisition side and how do we fix them? You know, are you having problems on the selling side? Are you having problems in the scaling side? Are you really having problems from a mindset, from a confidence perspective? You know, um, in any case, whether you are fit for our coaching program or not, you know, those, those 20, 30, 40 minutes, whatever that call might take, uh, could really mean a a tremendous paradigm shift for you and your business um, and, and, and allow you to really bring your business forward in that 90-day cycle, yeah? So don't be shy. Go ahead and book a call, landcoaching.com, landcoaching.com. We would love to hear from you. And um, I'm excited if you want to share with me what are some of your plans for play, planning, and producing for the next 90 days. You know, are you doing any play? Are you, what are you, what are your plans? What are some of the strategies or, or, or the strategic moves that you're going to be making that are going to bring your business forward? And um, what are the actual production goals that you have? What are the things that you're actually day, doing day in and day out consistently, predictably, so that you can predictably have actual cash checks and wires coming in from land profits? Because if you're not even sending out mailings, if you're not even sending out offers consistently, if you're not consistently sending out neighbor letters, if you're not consisting across all marketing channels, marketing your properties, actually following up, having a system for follow-up, you know, if you're not even in the game, how in the world are you going to see the results, you know? Uh, 
part of seeing results is being in the game. Part of being in the game is doing those daily things, you know, maybe 15, 20, 30 actions, you know, whether it be 30 actions of offers or 30 actions of, um, you know, identifying new counties or 30 actions of, you know, preparing a listing. What are those 30, 50 actions that are the same that you're doing over, over and over again, that you're mastering in order to get your business to the next level? That is being in the game. If you're not doing that consistently, day in and day out, you're not even in the game. Yeah, You're having a business that is sporadic, that is a hobby, that is entertainment. But if we're going to treat this as a business, you need to be in the game. So part of being in the game is planning your 90 days upcoming, being a time traveler for your business, for your family, um, and, and really constantly understanding that in order to build a bigger income in the future, in the next 90 days, it's going to require that you again take risks, that you again have courage, that you again take action, and courage will equal freedom. I can, every single day, if you're making uncomfortable decisions, I am telling you, there's bigger and bigger and bigger levels of freedom there available for you. And I so want them for you. So uh, thank you so much for tuning in uh, today. It has been a pleasure. And I look forward for, you know, to another episode with us together. If you enjoyed today's um, podcast episode, please go ahead and give us a review, a five-star review, share it with a friend, share with someone that needs to hear this message. Um, And thank you so much. And I look forward to spending time with you in the next episode. Bye-bye.